Well, maybe I'll just uh, start off by asking a couple of questions that have been on my mind. Uh, uh, fascination with the um, combination of uh, DMT and harmine and things of this nature. And um, what I'm interested in is is those places or plants or animals or ways in which people can come um, close to or have historically come close to or have had, had access to DMT. And I remember you briefly mentioned uh, a process whereby by combining rabbit lungs, say, and pig intestines, you could actually in some way create or obtain DMT. And I was wondering if you could go into a little more detail on how how that could be done. Oh, I'm not, I don't... I'm not sure pig intestines is the second ingredient, but what you need is a source of tryptophan, which is a common amino acid, and then rabbit lung, which uh, is uh, replete with an O-methylation enzyme, O-methyltransferase, and it will O-methylate the tryptamine into a psychoactive, which is just an example of... Uh, what's called cauldron chemistry, where you use animal enzymes to do chemical transformations. Another one that has been discussed in the literature is uh, using uh, the decarboxylation activity of enzymes in raw milk to decarboxylate the poison in Amanita muscaria, which is muscarine, to the hallucinogen, which is muscamole. And in Wasson's book on soma, he discusses the fact that the soma, whatever it was, was whipped together with milk curd and allowed to stand. And this was one of the major ar uh, arguments for identifying it as Amanita muscaria, because that would make it much more palatable and less toxic. But who knows how many of these things uh, exist, you know, because we have lost the lore of special uses for animal organs and that sort of thing. I and mean, that really is shamanic lore that we've lost touch with. Um, um, what I was thinking was the, if we could get back a little bit to the combination of the, uh, let's say, the tryptamine, the DMT, and the um, harmine, or those, those combinations, and also to get to the fugu. If I know very little about it, and it would be nice if, if you have... Some thoughts on the, on the chemistry of the fugu and the what is newt. The fugu? It's the um, a fish that's eaten in Japan. Oh. Yes, I don't know actually anything about that particular fish. I know that there are fish eaten off Norfolk Island, which is an island off the west coast of Australia. In fact, there's an amazing description of a trip in Hoffer and Osmond's book *Hallucinogens*. Uh, uh, this person. This happened in the early 60s. They, they saw a monument to the first landing on the moon and had all these super science fiction visions of the future that they had not expected to get high. It was an accidental. They had caught this fish, roasted it on the beach, and ate it. Uh, and in Hawaii, there are similar fish. And about six species are implicated. And I think in all cases, DMT is the compound. But not a lot of animal tissue contains utilizable amounts of hallucinogens. For instance, I don't think it's ever, no hallucinogenic insect has ever been confirmed, although there are persistent reports of a grub, a palm grub, a, a immature beetle form in Brazil, which is hallucinogenic, and uh, occasionally butterflies are mentioned as hallucinogenic, but it's never been confirmed. So this is an area where research needs to be done. When, uh, <clears throat> if one were to be able to make, say, DMT from the rabbit lungs and were able to obtain the uh, harmine from the Russian thistle or the uh, other plants, uh, how would one proceed in terms of combining these uh, in the most effective way? Well, you want a, a you want MAO inhibition, so you have to take an effective dose of the MAO inhibitor, and then uh, the DMT is usually potentiated at a dose lower than the effective dose without the MAO inhibitor, and probably 
since these things are degraded substantially in the gut, the most effective way of doing it would be to smoke it. Or sublingual absorption is also a direct route that avoids the degradation in the digestive system.